Namaste, Mother Nuggets. It's uh, a bit of a different video today. We've got Age of Fantasy Quest Beta. We're going to have a look at this. Uh, look, you know, normally I try to do videos where I'm playing some games, but um, uh, I thought maybe we could take a quick look at this and, and see what it's about. I'd also like to do some role-playing game stuff. Um, and, you know, it's uh, you know not always easy for me to make a video of gaming. It takes a long time. I don't always have lots of time, but I do want to, you know, talk about some things. And so I thought we'll give this a give this a bit of a crack. They have just um, announced this. They've just released this Age of Fantasy Quest beta, and I've this is something I've been looking into quite a bit. Is like doing some solo role playing stuff like that. And I thought, you know, maybe you haven't seen this. Maybe you have. Maybe you're not sure what it's all about. I'll give you a quick discussion about it, and um, you know, talk about how I'm going to be playing it uh, coming up soon in the future. Um, and yeah, if you, so if you don't know, Age of, Age of Fantasy obviously is one page rules. Um, Quest is there sort of, it's sort of like role playing. Look, after reading it, I kind of get the vibe. It's very, um, very much the vibe of sort of Diablo. So the way it works is that, you know, you generate your characters, um, and then you generate like some random sort of enemies and then, um, you, you do missions and the missions are broken down into chapters uh, and then they are then broken into sort of missions in between the chapters. And so you kind of get your short rest in between a mission and then you get your long rest in between chapters. And then there's like one big final chapter where you're fighting some kind of boss. Um, and that's kind of, you know, it's kind of very grindy, um, you know, with like very objective based stuff rather than say storytelling stuff. And then you fill in the blanks, uh, you know, yourself with the, with the storytelling. So I've just printed this off here. Um, and much like a normal one-page rules game, there's like the one-page version, which is like, you know, one sheet. And if you're familiar with... Uh, I didn't print on double-sided, so... If you're familiar with, uh, you know, one-page rules, which, you know, if you watch this channel, we play a bit of it every now and then, because it's quite simple. It's it's very similar, you know, it's it's just that, that system. The only sort of additional action that you have is like a skill usage. Um, and we'll see that when we look at the characters and stuff like that. It's very terrain heavy. They want you to have, you know, a 4x4 four four table with 20 plus pieces of terrain. They say it should cover 50% of, of the, um, of the, of the table. So that's, that, you know, warms my heart. Uh, and then your AI is very simple. It's like, you know, is there enemies inside line of sight? If yes, move to the enemy to shoot and, and, and charge them. Uh, otherwise go towards like your AI goal. That's their AI system. It's, it's super straightforward. Um, and then everything else is basically just, um, you know, just a one page rule sort of system. Um, so that's the one page version. And then obviously they've got the, they've got two books that kind of it splits into. There's, there's sort of, you know, your beginner's guide, the basic rules. And then there's like the campaign builder, which teaches you how to kind of do that. But I, I wanted to kind of draw attention to this because this I think is quite interesting. This game is primarily built around campaign play. So make sure to check out the official official narrative campaigns to get the full experience of the game. So I'm hoping that, um, you know, it, that they'll release some adventure modules, I guess, for, for it. After we've played a couple, I might even see if I can write some up and uh, submit it to them. Because uh, that would be definitely some some fun stuff. Um, but basically, the way it works is you start by generating your heroes. Um, you know, and uh, just like any other thing, you know, you kind of you've got heroes and units and stuff like that. Then you, your heroes have different stats. So not everyone can be a hero. Um, like when you, uh, you at the moment, they don't have rules in the book for how to choose a hero you have to do it on their online sort of builder. Um, and depending upon what you what you pick, depends upon, you know, sort of what your options are. But I, I don't know if it's every character in the army book that has the sub word hero in it, or if it's just ones that they have picked, um, you know, to, to be whatever. Um, in addition to sort of their normal quality defense stuff, uh, and equipment and special rules. They also get um, these different stats. Have endurance, which is how much stress the hero can take. Stress is sort of like a, uh, it, it's sort of like an action token management system. You know, like how how much they can 
how much the character can do. Strength, um, certain things will be needed to take a strength test, such as pushing or overcoming affliction. Dexterity, uh, same thing for jumping or overcoming crippling. Or willpower is discovering or overcoming disease. So when you get into the mission generation, it kind of explains like uh, most... Most tests will test either strength, dexterity, willpower. So they've kind of got different missions. And it's like you, to get the objective marker, you test the stress or whatever. And then also they've got some hazards and things where it will give you that affliction, crippling or disease, um, you know, sort of, sort of role. Otherwise, everything else is more or less the same, right? Um, you know, if it's a four plus strength test, you need to get above four. Very, very, you know obvious and similar to if you've got if you're familiar with that it'll, it'll work preparation and game structure the party so the game is played solo or cooperatively with two to four players controlled heroes who face off against ai enemies you put your heroes together simply select a hero from your army's list give it a class and then select any upgrades you want uh the total point cost of all the heroes will be used to determine how armies uh, how many enemies they will face uh, so the game will always be balanced regardless of the cost of individual uh, regardless of the cost of individual heroes so let's just have a look at some heroes i've printed some off here so um i've got like a scarletta who's a deep sea elf rogue Seamaster Rogue. So I'm guessing it's just the Seamaster. If I were to get the Age of Fantasy Skirmish and look up the Seamaster stats. Let's see. Uh, have I got Sea Elf? Oh, wait. They're Deep Sea Elves, aren't they? So it's under D. Deep Sea Elves. So a Deep Sea Elf stat is going to be Seamaster, 4 plus, 4 plus, Hand Weapon, Hero Strider Tough 3. Right? And then you can give them upgrades depending upon what kind of person they are so um you know obviously we've got some bonuses oh when you do the level up uh when you're creating the characters on the on the app you can increase the stats and stuff i've just gone with whatever they've suggested the default is so rogue right so i've got a rogue i've got a fighter um and i've got a uh, uh a cleric and i've got a, a warlock um is sort of you know the, the characters that i that i made up um, just to kind of, you know, have a D and D party. We've got like, you know, the, the, the f thief fighter, healer, healer and DPS. Right. Um, and so, yeah. And then you've got these, these different stats. Uh, I'd say, I don't know how they generate them. So that's kind of why you have to use the app, I guess. Uh, you would hope that there would be a pretty simple system. Uh, and then, you know, you've got how much XP. Everyone starts off with 25 gold to buy a weapon. And when you do, um, the thing it'll spend your money light armor is like 25 so i thought i'd do that to give my rogue a little bit of extra defense uh, and then you've got your special abilities just like you know what you would have um you know in 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 any one page rules kind of kind of game um you know and you've got the warlock gets the spells um and i don't know if they're the same again let's have a quick look are they the same as uh, so that's a champion of lust harbinger lust warlock um so that is from the rift demons that'll be under r rift demons of plague rift demons of war rift demons of change rift demons of lust so let's have a look what spells do they normally get does it say yeah acquiescence seizure yeah so it's the same spells as well so that's um you know good to know and they're keeping that pretty straightforward. Um, you know, that's that's great. <laughs> so that's the characters. They're pretty straightforward. We'll um, you know, we'll actually have a have a go of them uh, a bit later on, and then uh, then we'll see. So the enemies now before the game, you need to prepare a collection of enemy models for the AI to control. You put your collection together. Simply select the units and upgrades from any army list. There are no limitations to how many units a collection can have. We recommend putting together a large collection worth at least four times as many points as the party's total point value to make sure that you will face off against a variety of enemies and won't run out of models that you whilst you play. So what I have done, I've kind of got my um. So I've got dwarves. I've kind of so my my party is uh, sea elf, dark elf, orc, and um, lust demon. <laughs> so I was like, they're kind of bad guys. So I'll, I'll I'll use my good guys. You know what I mean? So I've got dwarves, high elves, saurians, and humans. And so what you can do is use their online app, and they'll randomly generate what they call waves for you. Right, um, or the other way that we can do it is we can 
um, you know, ran make the list and then randomly generate it ourselves. Uh, and you can see here, you know, it's just given me all the all the spells and stuff like that. And it's literally just using the um, you know, it's literally just using the the normal army list that you that you'd make. Um, we'll have a look at how they how they do that in a second. Prepare the battlefield. So you set up the battlefield. Um, once you've got your space to sp play, you want to place at least 20 pieces of terrain on it, though we recommend using 25 or more to keep things interesting. Whilst it's always nice to play with great looking pieces of terrain, you can simply use household items such as books and stuff. Uh, but what they do is that, like, they're saying, not, rather than just, like, you know, big things like this, like, you know, have things like barrels and obstacles and, and smaller stuff as well. Um, and, and that kind of... Uh, they go into more detail about like that when you're talking about like playing stuff. Then the mission, the game is primarily built around comp campaign play. So the mission you'll play will either be generated using the campaign builder or will be described using the narrative campaign. Follow the mission instructions from the campaign. Note that you don't always have to play a full campaign, but can, can just play a mission once off, right? So, and then everything else kind of works exactly the same. Uh, the only difference uh, that I can see is you can have rest, which means that you will restore stress points, and you can have skill, which does the skill action. Otherwise, everything's kind of more or less the same as, as doing all of that stuff. We'll just chuck through here. Okay, so the way they do wounds as well is, um, so, you know, wounds, uh, if you have models uh, will have as many wounds as it has tough value. Once it's reached that many wounds, it's removed as a casual. Uh, but if you're, it's a hero, um, it, instead of removing it as a casualty, it becomes unconscious instead. Um, and then your friend can basically come and get you every turn that you take, uh, you, that you're not moving, you get what's called a bleeding marker, three bleeding markers, and you're removed as a casualty. Heroes within three inches of an unconscious hero can use a skill action and suffer three stress to revive it, restoring three wounds. Um, so that's kind of, you know, you, you can heal your buddies, which is important. And I noticed that a lot of the auto-generated heroes... Like when you when you do like just pick whatever for me, they do quite frequently pick. Um, well, it appeared to pick the. Uh, I know there was a couple of them. health potion. They they gave it to the cleric uh, to the warlock. Sorry. So maybe it's to do with how much toughness they have. I don't know. Tough eighteen. There you go. The heroes have quite considerable. Tough nine. Tough eighteen. Why does the warlock have eighteen health and the cleric only have nine health? That's interesting. Tough nine. Tough nine. Hmm. That's really weird. Why do I have tough 918? Wow. I've got, like, less endurance. Hmm. That's really weird. I wonder why... Oh, you know what it is? It's probably the Dark Warding. Basically, you can take a wound and then deal one wound to an enemy uh, as part of your Warlock Pact. And um, you can also do the same thing where you, you take one wound and then it counts as having two. Maybe that's part of being a Warlock is you get a bit of extra health. But there you go. I don't know how they make their characters, but there you go. Uh, but yeah, you've got healing potions, and they can let you do that sort of stuff as well. You've got your morale and, and all the rest of it. Terrain rules. Uh, this is what we were saying before. Does it say it here? Um, pieces might have multiple terrain types, blah, blah, blah. Terrain guidelines. Here we go. So uh, here are all the things you should consider. There's no specific rules of the terrain, but here's what you should consider. The size of your terrain, rules for each terrain, number of pieces, how to place it. They separate them into small and large pieces. So anything that's kind of between one inch by one inch and three inch by three inch in size is considered small. So it's like a barricade, a box, whatever. And then large terrain, you know, four to four inches to 12 inches. Uh, you know, you really shouldn't go larger than 12 inches, especially if they're wanting to put, you know, that many pieces of there. Um, uh, they have give you sort of a guideline. 50% should block line of sight. 33 should provide cover. 33 should be difficult terrain. And randomly pick two pieces of terrain to be dangerous, which I think that's really a cool idea. And again, they give you a little list of like, here's, here's what we would recommend the terrain be. Um, and so, so that's pretty good there. Rules stacking, they talk about, you know, if, if things stack, then, uh, you know, it might go against the standard rules. You have to work work out what it does. Special rules take place over the standard sort of rules. And then you've got your usual list of, you know, what your special rules are. You've got special um, movement. You've got your, your command groups and things like that. And here we get to the campaigns. And I think this is the meaty part. This is the part everyone wants to see. So maybe I'll put a link to this at the start. So the way you build campaigns is you generate random campaign... Or you can use it to generate random one-off missions to play. Uh, each campaign is made up of D3 plus one chapters. Each chapter will have D3 missions. Before each mission, roll a random travel event. And then... Now, I don't know if... When they say random travel event, they have a list of these random events. I'm guessing it's what they mean here. But, um... Yeah, I don't know. 
<laughs> I'm guessing it's that. Um, before each mission, roll for a random travel event and then roll to see what objectives you will have. Once all chapters have been played, the final chapter will, will be having D3 missions. Chapters, players may pick in which order to play any of the main chapters, but once the chapter has started, all missions must be played before moving to the next chapter. Heroes will only fully heal and buy upgrades between campaign chapters. Before each campaign begins, choose a difficulty level, which will be used for the missions later in the campaign. So you've got a like normal, challenging, hard, very hard. Successful missions. At the end of each mission, heroes restore three wounds and three stress and all bleeding. At the end of each chapter, heroes restore all wounds, stress, bleeding, and status conditions, but not injuries. So if you like get, um, if you're killed during a mission, you can come back, but you get like you know a smashed eye, a broken leg, whatever. Failed missions. All heroes are killed during a mission. They must restart the chapter, but not restore all wounds and stress, bleeding conditions, and all injuries. So it's kind of it's very computer gamey. You know, it's got that Diablo feel where like. You know, you don't just pop back at the start of the, you know, whatever section you're up to. You have to do the whole level again, you know, <laughs> or like, you know, Batman or, or you know, even, uh, you know, my son's been playing Spongebob, you know, like they have checkpoints along the way and that's like your missions. You have to do like each section, but, you know, really you might have to start from the very beginning again if that's, you know, the, the, the problem. And if you run into a problem and can't get through it, you might have to start again. So, and then final chapter works just like other chapters, but all players get a plus one when rolling for the alertness increase. Once the final chapter is complete, the campaign is over. And then as you play, you can level up your level up your guys. And then depending upon how much XP you get, it, you get to choose. So, like, to when you get to level two, you need three XP to get that. You get plus one toughness, plus one skill, uh, you know. And so, you're doing that. But now you might be like, okay, cool. So, you, you have... A random number of chapters, and then each chapter has a random number of missions. You can't move to another chapter until you've completed, uh, you know, the mission. That's fair enough. It all makes sense. Um, but what do the missions look like? So the missions come with two... Um, they have two kinds of objectives. You have a primary objective and a secondary objective. Uh, they're set up with the following structures, objectives and rewards, search tokens, enemy deployment, hero deployment, and challenges. So primary objectives... Um, set up the table, you're going to roll for a random one, they all must be within, uh, well, after you complete the primary objective, your heroes must leave the same table corner, they must all be within three inches to do that, right? So you finish, you go to a corner, that's how you escape. Now, rewards tells you, you know, each hero always gets hazard pay, then earns XP based on the objectives that they completed. Now, uh, secondary objectives, we'll get to them in a second. So all of the primary objectives are pretty straightforward. They all revolve around sort of objective markers, at least in this this first. This is a beta, so this is what they've got. So it's like the center of the table is the AI goal. When the last model from the first wave uh, of reinforcements is killed, it drops. So what happens is the enemies come in waves, uh, and you you know they 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 set up in waves. And I think it's normally four. Uh, we'll have a look at that in a second. But the ones that I was looking at online, it, it seemed to be four. You know, um, the heroes. Uh, so the enemies they they head into the AI goal. When they die, they leave a marker. The heroes have to use a skill action within one inch of that marker and pass a strength test. The object marker is removed and the objective is completed. Uh, target defense. In this case, it gets placed in uh, the center of a table quarter. That's the AI goal. Uh, heroes have to... So this one, it's kind of like you're bashing down a door or something. So you're making uh, a strength test and then you have to get... like Every time you pass the strength test, um, you know, you... And there's no enemies around... You know, that is seized, you get to put a token on it. Once you've got your you know, six tokens, that, that is there. So you see that they're, they're very strength-based. Then we move over to the next one. It's very similar. Six inches of a random table corner, uh, which is the AI goal. Heroes are within one. They have to pass a dex text and then uh, drop it within one inch of the... Uh, if they're shaken, right? So yeah, you pick up the thing, you have to drop, pass the dex text, and then you drop it within one inch. Um, the object is completed when the hero is carrying the marker, ends the activation within six of the hero corner. So that one, you know, you're getting it, you're moving it, but you're testing dex every time you want to move it. Uh, two objectives are randomly placed in different parts. Uh, so you're investigating. Uh, the, the AI will, the one that's closest to the heroes will always be the AI goal. So that way the AI is always coming closer to the heroes, you know. Uh, heroes may use a skill action within one inch of the marker. They pass the dex test. The marker is removed. The objective is complete once both markers are removed. 
So again, you know, you see we've got two with strength, two with dex. Guess what these ones are going to be testing? They're going to be testing will, right? Will test. <laughs> so it's very, they're very similar. Delivery and retrieval, very similar. Uh, area search, three objective markers at the center of different table quarters. Uh, the heroes may use a skill action when they're within one to test the will on a five plus, or if it's the last marker, then the objective is completed. So you can see it's very, you know, very objective marker based, very one page rulesy, you know. Uh, just like the normal missions. Then you have your secondary missions, and you can kind of tell they've, uh, they're have they a little bit copy and pasty, because you can even see they've, um, you know, again, beta rules. This one says target defense. It says it should be safeguard, but it's got the same um, heading as the last one. And if you look at the um, thing, place one objective marker at the center of the table, which counts as the AI goal. The skill uh, the heroes may use a skill action within one inch of pass a dex test. If passed, they reach the end of the round. The heroes within three inches of the marker while the enemies aren't, and then it sees. Like, it's very similar to you know, the previous ones, uh, and they're all that way, right, they're all kind of, you know, doing those, um, you know, sort of random, um, you know, objective marker-based sort of quests, um, so you've got your primary and your secondary in each mission that you have to kind of accomplish, um, and depending upon what you do will depend upon, you know, how you, how you finish up. Um, and then you have, so yeah, that's the objectives. You can see it is very one page rulesy. I don't know how it's going to play. I'm actually interested to see how it is. I am a little disappointed that they, they are so samey. So we'll, we'll just have to see. I mean, obviously, uh, that's that's the nature of the game when you're doing generic stuff. And I'm sure their narrative ones are going to be much better than that, right? Uh, search tokens. So then, after you've done your mission objectives, you've also got search tokens. When setting up, you're going to put three plus uh, D3 plus two search tokens on the table so you know you're getting a lot of stuff it is basically generating for you like a computer game level and then depending upon what is in the token uh you know it's um it will depend upon whether you get something good or bad right it could be a creature nest where you get afflicted or diseased uh booby trap where you get crippled or impaired it could be uh you know a hidden trove an alchemist bomb or a gold stash where you get some treasure uh you know randomly randomly generated so it could be good it could be bad um yeah <laughs> and then you also have your your deployment so once you've got your objectives placed down once you've got everything set up there you've got um you know d to deploy these you start off with some sentries you get reinforcements every so many rounds a new wave of enemies is, is placed in the wave size the total value of any wave size is based on the percentage of the total points of the hero value right so it is important that you know how much your hero points are going to cost the stronger your heroes the more enemies you're going to fight and then depending upon what difficulty you chose at the start when you were setting up your campaign will tell you how many, just how many people are in that. So, like, and it's 50% is the lowest level. So if you think, like, if you've got, if let's just have a look at my heroes here real quick. So we've got 90, we got 75, so that's like 165 points, uh, 85 and 145. So what's that? Like uh, 200, 300, like almost 400 points-ish. Um, you know, uh, so if you're, if that, that's, that's more than the army that I normally fight with, you know what I mean? Like we've been doing 150 point battles, so that's like triple how many minis I have. So, uh, you know, for the armies, the armies are, they are just the normal army list points. Like it's 25 points for three warriors. Like it's not like you're generating, um, you know, like, they're not cheaper or more expensive or whatever. So, like, your four heroes are, f are legit fighting, like, whole waves of armies. So even if we were to have, you know, you've got four dudes against the kind of size army that I've been fighting, you know, with, like, more than that, 200, 250 points. Or, you know, if it's difficulty two, then... And that's each wave. So you start with a wave of them, and then every so many rounds, uh, you know, you get that. Alertness at the end of each round, roll a die on a six, increase alertness by two or else by one, uh, when you reach six times X alertness, where X is the chosen difficulty level, deploy a new wave of reinforcements uh, and remove all alertness. So, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> you're getting them every now and then. Uh, and then when they're deployed, it depends on, you know, sort of, you know, each table quarter is numbered one to four, and then you roll one to four, and roll a five or six, you get to pick which one, and then reinforcements. Uh, when the new wave is being deployed, the number of each uh, each table corner, one to four, same sort of deal. Um, and it's coming from that table corner instead of, like, just placed on the table quarter. And then your heroes after centuries have been deployed, number each table one to four, and then you're going to roll that uh, five to six, you choose yourself, and you're within six inches of the table corner. And obviously, 
Uh, you know, you have to get out on a table corner as well. You play the mission. After the hero's deployed, mission has failed. The uh, pr mission preparation is finished. The game begins. You can also optionally have some uh, some channel challenging hazards. Um, so, you know, depending upon what your location is, you could have, like, different things happen. Like, maybe there's a steep, steep mountain. And, you know, maybe it's uh, increased alertness. Or maybe it's, like, random times of day, random weather. So, you can kind of play with these if you want it to be a bit more uh, di dynamic. Um, and that's going to sort of, you know, help increase a few things. Um, note that these hazards are dramatically increased the difficulty and are not recommended for beginners. And I would say, like, look, you know, like straight out. Uh, oh, on the way to the start of the event, there was a steep mountain, and one of your heroes is crippled. Like, <laughs> one of them is afflicted. Like, you're going to start with these things. Um, oh, maybe you get 5G, so that could be nice. There's one good thing and five bad things <laughs> in a quiet trail. Nothing happens. Um, so there you go. That's that's kind of so. That's basically it, right? And then you've got these random events, um, which. Uh, at the beginning of each round, roll one die on a d6, roll two separate dice at a time, when the first one represents the first number, the second one. So it's like a 6d6. If you've played, like, Warhammer and stuff, you might be familiar with this. They used to do a lot of these tables back in 3rd Ed and stuff, where it was 6d6. So depending upon what you roll will depend on, like, what you get. And they range from, like, you know, you take a wound, to, like, you get minus one to stuff, you take d3 stress, um, you know, random here inside the terrain gets plus one defense till the end of the game. So, like, there's lots of, it's very varied in uh, what they are um, where was the one I saw before it's like uh, you know there's there's a light from God where's a godly sun rays so all heroes get plus one will until the next event right um, so it's just kind of random stuff hexed gale one random hero is afflicted so very random things that kind of uh, can can help or hinder you along the way very random uh, and once per round is pretty interesting. Uh, the second one represents the yeah, so we had a look at that. So yeah, and that's pretty much it. That's pretty much what it looks like. What's next? And then they're like talking up their narrative campaigns that they're going to bring out. So we will give that, and then here's like the super, the super short version again. That's this is the campaign builder one page rules version of you know the the actual one page rules. You know, <laughs> so <laughs> you got all your stuff there as a bit of a short. So that's. Age of Fantasy Quest. We will give it a go. Um, I don't know when I'll get the chance to do that, but um, I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll do a video. Where we'll set up our campaign, and then we'll we'll give it a crack. We'll see how we go and, and play through the missions, and hopefully that gave you a bit of a insight into how it's gonna, um, you know, what what it's like. It's very different to what I was expecting. I was expecting something more similar to Fifty One Fifty or, um, you know, uh, one of those kinds of game Scarlet Heroes-y type deal. Um, I, I didn't realise it was going to be basically one page one page rules. Just here's a way to connect missions back to back, which is kind of what we've been doing anyway. It'll be interesting to see if the stats of the heroes make a big difference. Um, you know. Anyway, let me know what you think. You know, have you played it? Have you given it a try? Is it fun? Um, you know, if you've got some actual plays on a YouTube channel or something, link them below so I can see them and I'll go watch them. Otherwise, we're gonna, we'll, we'll have some games of this at some point so hopefully that was an interesting video um if let me know what you think like do you want me talking about these rambly stuff or do you want me to um just play games and stuff what 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 would you like to see and or hear more of uh thanks for watching and i'm gonna stop talking ciao for now